So, most people, when they start one of these, like, gaming projects, they have a specific mm. game in mind that they are trying to play. Did you have a specific game at the time that was like, this is the reason why I'm going to start this project? Or was it just like, I generally want to make gaming better in this in this space? Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. So I had something uh, in mind. Uh, so let's think, it was like a, a 15 years ago or yeah. more. That was even before Lutris existed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was tinkering with like getting games to run on Linux. And mm -hmm. one of the big games at the time was uh, the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Mm -hmm. And like my first um, UI I wrote in Python was this kind of like mini uh, configuration tool for launching uh, Oblivion on Linux that would like apply some settings, that would apply some command line arguments uh, that will, I think it was replacing a texture somewhere to fix a, a bug. Mm -hmm. So that was like really simple, really basic. You had like a button, like three buttons on the, in the window or something. Um, and in some way that was kind of what got it started, mm. but also, so there, at, the, at the time there was this, uh, there was, uh, um, Play on Linux was already there. But by about But Play on years. Linux was, huh? I, I, uh, yeah, uh, 15 years ago, yeah, it was already in the service. No, no, like, that's uh, what I'm saying. I, I Play on Linux was out for about two years by the time that Lutris came out. Um, I'm not exactly sure when Play on Linux came out, but yeah, it was here like a I few say years it was before. 2007. Yeah, that might be. A, yeah, so that would be like two years. Um, and and the thing it was like fo heavily focused on Windows games. Mm -hmm. And one big issue I had was like not only with Windows games because at the time we were like one wine wasn't as good as it as it is now. Mm -hmm. And Linux native games weren't as bad uh, as they are now. So okay. they were better, like, yeah, um, because a lot, a lot of the, the Linux native games, they come out, they run great. And over time, they kind of break themselves. Yeah. Like, compatibility becomes worse and worse, and it becomes harder. harder to get to keep those games running, mm -hmm. so all the games you had at the time they were working great, and now those games they they are like kind of hard to to get working. Yeah. Um, so we had some a, a lot of hopes regarding uh, native games and also like open source games that were like pretty much like one of your only options uh, when running Linux is you had to use a lot of those open source games. So. Uh, Open Arena, uh, Xonotic, uh, all those games. We wanted to make them like uh, give them more exposure. Um, so My that's why I wanted Super Tux Scout. <laughs> yeah, Super Tux Scout is one of them, like uh, one of the the big ones. Um, and I didn't want to focus only on uh, Windows games for that reason. I wanted like to to be like open to. Um, native games to windows games and one why not add in the bunch also all the emulators so mm -hmm. that we would have like pretty much any game playable um, that was basically spending a lot of time like tinkering on linux um getting emulators to work like configuring them and trying to find the best settings and i was like okay well this involves like reading a lot of tutorials this involves a lot of tinkering uh, some emulators, you can install them with your package manager. Some you cannot, you have to download them, you have to compile them. So why not make like some kind of unified platform where you can pay base pretty much anything. So that's what like the, the basis of Lutris was always to be able to play any, everything uh, from Windows games, from Amiga games, DOS games, uh, and Linux games, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it started like with like that one game oblivion but mm -hmm. the goal of those the the project was always like a multitude of games so it's sort of to be like a unified platform where everything can be done from this one place which is especially a big deal now with all of these 
different launches that exist. Like, you know, you have your Steam launcher, Epic Games launcher, GOG's got a launcher. Like, everybody's got a launcher. But with mm-hmm. this, you can just be like, okay, I want to play this game. You go to the game. It'll do, like, the... It'll open up the launcher and whatever stuff it needs to do. But you have this single access point to get all of that content you want to get to. Yeah. Which is, um... Uh... Kind of like this u- unique stuff. I mean, um, you have stuff like that similar with a Herrick launcher as well, but mm-hmm. uh, to a lesser extent because there's not a, uh, there are not as many integrations. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have something similar in GOG for Windows. I mean, Geo- like Go- Galaxy has not never been released to, uh, on Linux, but there are some integrations which are the basis for for the Lutus integrations. Mm-hmm. We do use those. I mean, they're written in Python as well. So they are a good inspiration for like um, writing the the Lutris ones, um, but yeah, that's that's um, really neat feature to have like all the launchers like grouped together. But also, it's like no, it doesn't matter if it's Windows or Linux or anything. It can be like a PlayStation Three game. It can be like a Nintendo Switch. It can be like Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. It doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's also like um, like abstracting the plat- the game platform and only caring about what game you want to play. Mm-hmm. That was like one of the goals. So I don't know if you've read the Wikipedia page for Lutris. I don't know if you ever feel like doing that. Um, but on the page, it says Lutris began as a piece of software called Oblivion Launcher. Citation needed. Is that true? Can you give them a citation? Um, yeah, that was what I was talking about. Like uh, previously, it was so you may be able to find it um, in the Ubuntu French forums. Back mm-hmm. then, uh, I made a post. Uh, I probably can't find the source code for that Oblivion launcher if I look into my hard drives. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's perfectly true. That's like what was like the the basis of like the, the first Python code. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I mean, none of that code made it through like the actual Lutris. Right. Um, the actual basis for uh, the Lutris project was a framework called Quickly mm-hmm. that was um, created by a French Ubuntu developer called Didier Roche. Uh, and that was basically a way to uh, scaffold your application so that you had like the, the the whole like UI already built. Mm-hmm. You had like a window uh, already made for you. You had like the, the the Launchpad integration. So people don't u- really use Launchpad now, but it was like the in- equivalent to GitHub. Mm-hmm. So in one command, you could just build your application into a package and lo- push it to Launchpad. So it would be like you could make a dev file out of your software with one line. Mm-hmm. So that was like really convenient to to get started on Lutris. I just had like to build the code inside the implication, but all the scaffold was already done, so that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 